Hey everyone, as you can see, if you're watching this and not just listening to the audio version, I'm sporting my Foucault shirt in support of Foucault and what I'm about to say about him, um, which I will preface this by saying that despite the kinds of arguments Baudrillard levels against Foucault, I very much like Foucault. So just wanted to put that out there. Now before jumping into this, this kind of polemical thing between Baudrillard and Foucault, uh, you can follow me on Instagram if you want, at theory underscore and underscore philosophy. You can contribute uh, both monetarily or by just liking, sharing, subscribing, telling your friends. If your friends want a good way to be able to fall asleep at night, maybe they, you know, you can recommend they listen to me. Um, and what else? I don't know. I think that's about it. So I don't want to waste any more of your time. Let's jump into the kind of nitty gritty between Foucault and Baudrillard. I want to start out by saying that um, as Baudrillard was writing Forget Foucault, apparently he and Foucault was, were, uh, were corresponding. And Foucault had initially intended to follow up with a, with a rebuttal, with a kind of counter uh, piece, which would have been very cool. But apparently Foucault kind of dropped out of that and just told Baudrillard, you know, go ahead, write what you want. So Baudrillard did, and that gained him a lot of notoriety. So gained him a lot of notoriety among those scholars in France, like Deleuze, Bourdieu, uh, Foucault, obviously, who didn't really like what Baudrillard had to say. To extend an olive branch to them, Baudrillard's critique in Forget Foucault isn't quite as refined as I personally think it could have been. But before getting into the critique, let's talk a little bit about Foucault's relationship to signs and sign systems, which I think we could all agree is one of the central points of Baudrillard's work. That is talking about the ways that signs overtake so-called reality. So for Foucault, and this really goes back to some of his earliest books, the order of things, and the archaeology of knowledge, he's describing the ways in which sign systems come to replace real ones, and they leave in their stead a kind of programmatic and operational order. So sign systems, in Foucault's words, replaced all languages with uh, operations of a logical nature, and that comes out of the order of things. So here we might say, oh, well, that seems to really relate to what Baudrillard is talking about. Specifically, Baudrillard, well, not really specifically, but really generally all across Baudrillard's work, he seems to be interested in the replacement of a kind of ambiguous reality with a structured system of signs and codes. Now we see this continue all throughout Foucault's work from his discussion of the prison to the clinic, to, you know, the, the hospital, to sexuality there emerges these distinct discourses, these regimens of signs that code themselves and control themselves, setting up an operational simulacrum, if, if you will, that is only penetrable, it's only accessible to certain people with certain privileges. So there does seem to be quite a bit of a, an agreement between them there. So what, what is Baudrillard's problem? Why, why does he write this thing called Forget Foucault? Well, the problem, and this is in my mind the biggest problem that Baudrillard has with Foucault, comes out in the line where he says, perhaps Foucault wrote so well of power because power has ceased to exist, because it is a fiction. And what, what does that mean? Well, to give a kind of really brief summary of Foucault's work, he maintains that there are sites of power, be it, you know, government officials, bureaucrats, doctors, uh, psychiatrists, which are doctors, but anyways, uh, prison guards, school teachers, anything like that. Baudrillard is not so sure. In fact, Baudrillard says, could it be that you discussing power in this way, that you saying this is where power is, actually enforces and reinforces that very power, those sites of power. To which Baudrillard says, well, we can't really forget the fact that there's a kind of reciprocal action taking place here. So, for example, um, in the case of like a teacher, you know, engaging with students, to Foucauldian, that teacher is emblematic of a kind of uh, broader 
panoptic system. They are a figurehead of that in that instance. Baudrillard says, well, if that's the case, then how can we make sense of the fact that the children, the people who we've culturally accepted to have very little power, always seem to be challenging that authority, always seem to be going after it. So Baudrillard leaves room for what he calls a kind of reversal, or in his words, more specifically, seduction. Now, it should be noted that Foucault talks about this as well. He just calls them subjugated knowledges. But in the Foucaultian paradigm, you cannot wrest the term subjugated from the assumption that there is a kind of hierarchy of power. Now, Baudrillard isn't saying that things like oppression, hegemony don't exist. He's very clear about that. He, he thinks that these things do exist, but that we need to be careful when discussing them so as not to reify these structures, to reinforce them. So rather than thinking about it in terms of power operating in one direction, Baudrillard wants to think of it as a more holistic game, one in which this, the oppressed people actually have the potential to challenge authority. Because otherwise we just say, well, there's nothing, we could just say there's like nothing that can be done. And Baudrillard is also very clear that he's not so much criticizing Foucault as he's criticizing people who really take Foucault to be their, their kind of god, who have t-shirts with him, uh, with his face on it, on them. So one example would be the idea of kind of liberal or neoliberal governmentality that has taken over um, certainly Foucault's studies. And neoliberal governmentality pretty much goes like this, that there aren't so-called sites of power per se, but rather we have internalized power to the point that we can govern ourselves, hence the neoliberal aspect of it. So this is, has been uh, extended to study like journalism, for instance, where there are these mechanisms of neoliberal governmentality that determine and delimit what is acceptable journalism, what should be said, what should be explored. And by virtue of that, there are those knowledges that are subjugated and closed off. Now for Baudrillard, he would say, well, it, that doesn't seem to be true because there are just so many of these other sources that permeate. And in fact, as soon as we begin to consider things like the various media that have emerged, you know, over the last 50 years or so, it seems as though there's actually an explosion of these alternative sources. So it seems naive to say, well, power is just totally shutting these forces down, these voices down, in order to instill a kind of proper uh, hegemonic one. Now, additionally, in the terms of like um, sexuality, where Baudrillard and Foucault would certainly butt heads, is in the way that Foucault reifies an idea of kind of real sexuality at the end of the history of sexuality, when he says that we have to move away from sexuality to bodies and pleasure, to which Baudrillard would clearly be suspicious. And he would say, well, what, what are these real pleasures, these real bodies that aren't always already wrapped up with this simulated idea of sexuality? So for Foucault, and this goes back to that first quote I mentioned from him, reality and the sign form are separate, whereas for Baudrillard they intertwine. For Baudrillard we've always been simulated and we can't discount that. Now in terms of sexuality, to bring it back once again, Baudrillard would think it completely naive that um, we can just dissociate sexuality from these things called bodies and pleasure because they are always already wrapped up with a kind of simulated regime, a kind of simulated apparatus. And yeah, that, I mean, that pretty well, <laughs> it's a very brief introduction to that, that discussion. You know, Baudrillard has so many books that can really be expanded upon to discuss his uh, divergence from Foucault. But I just wanted to give you that kind of brief introduction outlining what I think to be some pretty important distinctions between them. Thanks.